Hi, I'm Ben Brownie for Boris Effects. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how we integrate particle illusion into actual footage. We're gonna be doing some 3D work, and I'm also gonna show you how we can start to work with mocha tracking directly in particle illusion as well. We're gonna be taking a look at a couple of different full workflows, so let's get to it. So here's the first shot that we're gonna be taking a look at. As a shot of a golfer, and we're gonna be tracing in uh, the path of the golf ball as it moves through. Now, because this is a 3D shot, the first thing I wanna do is track this in 3D. So we actually have a chance to uh, properly match uh, both the camera and the movement of the ball. This is gonna be very important for us. Uh, and I'm in Synthize for this. Uh, but of course you can use any other 3D tracking uh, software that you have as well. We just need to get a camera track. I'm just gonna be running the uh, auto solve on this. And if we, uh, we play through this now, you can see we've got a, a pretty decent track there. And you can see the camera is moving up on this view as well on our, our left hand view. Okay, so before we do anything else, we need to know two points. We need to know where the ball starts. We need to know where the ball ends. And if possible, it's gonna be handy to know where the apex of the ball is as well, where it's at the top of its flight. Uh, and I need to make sure that I have uh, actual proper uh, positions for those in 3D space. Um, it's very difficult to see where the ball comes down. I'm gonna say that for nothing. Uh, oh, there we go. And we take a, take a little look, zoom in here, and it goes plonk down there. So that's that's where we have our ball. Uh, and I need to get a, a point that is close to, or actually on that on that point there. So in Synthize, it means I can just come in and uh, add another track in here. Uh, and depending on what uh, tracking software that you're working on, this might be more or less difficult. You might just have to find something that is close by uh, and then make do with that and sort of offset it easily. Uh, I'll create a tracker up here. Uh, we'll track in somewhere, somewhere that doesn't move. Probably this shadow here. Very difficult to find a shadow that doesn't move around here. Uh, and we'll just sort of track this back and see what we, what, see what we can do. Stop right there, takes forward. That gives us something. And once we've got that in place, I'll do the same sort of thing for uh, the for the front as well. Let's just lock that one up. And here it should be a little bit easier just to, to track in the T. And we'll turn it off there where we can't track anymore. So I've got my two trackers there. I'll just refine my solve with those tracks in place. Bloop, there we go. So now I have my trackers, got trackers one, two, four at the back, one, two, five at the front, and let's find something that is sort of middle distance as well, which is probably this one here. It's tracker 108. Okay, so I'm, I'm just gonna export those trackers out. So I'll not export any of these other trackers. And let's export to After Effects. I'll just add this to my current project and I'll hit OK. So in After Effects now, I have my camera doing its camera thing. I also have my nulls for the foreground the middle, which isn't quite the middle, but it's it's good enough, and the background. It gives us a, an idea of where the where the middle is in in between these two. So now we know where things are in 3D space, let's add in a light so that we can use that light to generate particles in just a moment. So I'm gonna come in new light uh, I'll just have this as a point light. I know I will call this a uh, particle emitter. It's already 3D, so let's open up our, our position here and we'll keyframe these. 
So I want my, my first position to be at the foreground. So I'm going to copy that and I paste that data in there. In fact, that's going to be the data right up until, or sorry, that's going to be the position of the ball right up until it gets hit at that frame. So there we go. We'll move our first keyframe there. And now I want to find out when and where our ball hits. We know it goes over here somewhere. And let's check out where it hits. Oh, there we go. And it hits. Boom, there, which is our background position. So let's just copy that, paste this in. Now I can see this isn't quite exactly where it's lining up in the ball because I had to offset this a little bit. So let's come in and I'm just going to bring this a little bit uh, back very very small amount back in in 3d space and that's where it's going to hit and now let's find the middle point so it's probably going to be somewhere in the middle and i'm not going to do anything too clever all i'm going to do with this one is i'm just going to yoink it up into the uh into the sky so we'll create an apex there we don't i don't know where that apex is uh, really at the moment, but we'll figure that out in a little bit. All right, so the only other thing we need to do here is make sure that these aren't set to linear because like, if they're set to linear, we're just gonna get a whoop, whoop. So we're gonna come down, have them all selected, right click on keyframe interpolation, and I'm gonna set my spatial interpolation to Bezier. And that's gonna give us uh, these nice Bezier handles for us to, to work out in a little bit. Okay, so now we know where the ball was hitting and we've got a light that is following that along. Pretty good. Let's make our particles. So I'm going to add particle illusion onto my video clip. And I've got to do a couple of things now just to make sure that this is all prepped for when we take this into particle illusion. So I'm going to use the comp camera because I've already created up my 3D camera in here. I'm also going to change my transform tracking and I'm going to change my emitter and I'm going to take that path from comp light. I've only got one light in there, so that's going to be fine for us. Now we've done that, let's launch particle illusion. And I'll come somewhere, I'll come somewhere in here. Okay, and let's add a preset. I'm just going to add in a basic emitter here, just like the most basic emitter we can have. And let's come into the particle type now. And one first thing I'm going to do is turn off or turn down the velocity to zero because we don't want these particles moving anywhere. And I'll take my, my size down as well. Take my size down to one, see what we've got there. As we play this back, we can see we're generating up a few particles in 3D. They're not matching exactly where the ball's going. That's fine, we're going to fix that. Uh, and they're not, they're not many of them, but we have something to work on now. All right, so I'm going to come to my basic emitter. The, this is still too too big, even with our size set to one. So I'm just going to scale this down even more, like in the, the actual emitter rather than the, the particle size. And let's come into our particles, and we're going to add in some more particles here. And as I add in more, you can see that line starts to thicken up. And we are getting a little bit of um, like a strange spacing going in between this. So what we need to do is just come over into the particle behavior and we need to say uniform spacing. This is going to force all of the particles to have uniform spacing now. So now as we play this back, we, we get a little line that's coming through and going down there. As it hits over on this side, like because we made that, that size quite small over the first half, because that was looking a little bit big. It's now looking a little bit small over on the second half. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just keyframe this up. So when it's off screen, I can just keyframe this up. I'm not sure how much I need to keyframe this or how much I need, how big I need to make this. But that's, that's looking pretty good there. If we want a longer trail 
all you have to do is change the lifespan of the uh, of the particles there so that these stay in for longer Beep. nice and if we want to change the color all we need to do is change the color over here color over life uh, let's load in the preset yeah maybe that one that's good and we'll fade this out with the alpha over life as well let's load in the preset here uh, let's just have it fading over time there we go and we'll change that from linked color to full gradients now this is going to be fading up and down boom okay so that's that's really basically it what we need to do now is go back into after effects i hit apply and we're going to tweak up that um that path all right so back in here we can see let's come back to the beginning we can see that our path isn't exactly just like a straight up straight shoot down it does bend a little bit so they he's um he sliced it a little bit is it a slice i don't know hook maybe it's a hook slice that way and hook that way I don't know I'm not a scientist um what I'm going to do though is I will change this to to two views here uh, and select my top view and let's come into the uh, my light because remember it's the light that is changing the um the path and let's zoom into this a little bit because I if I select one of these because I made this a bezier movement you can see we have bezier handles so what i can do with these handles is i can just if i get rid of these widgets or we'll zoom in a little bit get rid of the widgets and because we're not adding in any other keyframes we're just changing the path here uh to to fit the timing hopefully we're going to get a more accurate sort of representation of what's happening with the ball itself i can come into this secondary one here and manipulate this around as well and we'll round preview this out and we'll take a little look and there we have our 3d trail uh, creating this lovely little graphical example so that's how you do it if you've got a shot with quite a lot of 3d uh, movement got a bit of 3d parallax you can actually judge where things are in 3d sometimes you don't have that luxury and you just sort of have to um, I'm not going to say cheat it but you have to do things in a slightly different way uh, when you're working just in 2D. So let's have a look at our second shot now. And so we've got a slightly different uh, type of shot here. We've got the, the golfer. There is still some camera movement, but there's no 3D camera movement. There's all only sort of 2D uh, camera shake here. So there's not enough parallax for us to build up a 3D scene and find out where things are exactly in uh, in 3D space. But what we can do is we can still work with um, some of the built-in features with inside a particle illusion to try and stabilize this shot out and get, get it looking how we, how we need it. So the first thing we need to do is to try to uh, compensate for the, the camera movement before we go into particle illusion. Uh, and we can do that very, very easily. If we come into transform and tracking, here, because we're transforming the uh, the camera move only, we're just going to set our transform to world tracking. Uh, and I'll go into my uh, motion tracker and I'll come into the Mocha motion tracker. And here's what we've got inside of Mocha. We have our search area, which is this red little thing here, and we have our world center, which I'm not going to touch. Uh, all I need to do is just find an area uh, which is going to be representative of the uh, of the world move that I want to uh, to track in. So it's going to be something that is pretty close to where the ball is, and this this sort of hill is actually pretty good. Uh, and I'll just track that through just on the left hand side there. Uh, if you want to learn more about Mocha, we have a whole uh, training series all about um, you know how you get the best tracks out of out of Mocha, uh, and you'll find Mocha built into pretty much every single. Uh, continuum effect uh, it's it's really used everywhere and once that's finished tracking forwards let's come back to the untracked bit the red bit and we'll track backwards 
and get the last areas sorted. And I'm happy with that. If we take a look at what the world center is doing, you can see that the dot on the trees is always staying with the trees, which means when we start to use this in Particle Illusion, we're gonna get the movement of the camera without affecting the position of the emitter, which would mean we'd get a squiggly trail rather than a nice straight one. I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to click any other buttons uh, to apply it. I'm just gonna launch Particle Illusion again now. And we'll just add in a, another basic emitter here. And let's now manually change where this, this emitter is being placed. So I'm gonna just create my, I'll drag my manual, uh, my basic emitter over the top here. I'll set my start frame to be frame 60. Yeah, we're at frame 60, you can see here. And I'm going to set a keyframe over on my position. I'm gonna make sure that's set to Bezier. And let's come in and we'll find where it goes off screen, which is around about there. And I'll set another Bezier keyframe on my position here. If I hold down the space bar, I can pan around a little bit. And I'm just going to move that vaguely into place. All right, and let's do the same things we did before. We'll come into the particle type. Uh, I'll make sure that's set to uniform spacing. I'll turn my number up. And here I can probably turn the, the size up as well. And uh, change the velocity, take that all the way down. Whoop, there we go. And we're gonna do the same sort of thing as we did with the light. You can see that we have our Bezier handles right here. So what I can do is I can change my, change my Bezier handle up at the top. If I select this, this point up here as well, we might be able to see the, the Bezier handle on this one. I might have to zoom in just to expose it. Lovely. Uh, and if the, um, if the line here is a little bit too faint for you, well, there's a couple of things we can look at. Like one is the opacity and turn the opacity up to 100%. Uh, the other one we can do, if we come back into the particle type here, uh, we can add in a higher number to thicken this out a little bit more. Uh, we could also change the, the shape up at the top here. So that instead of being a blur and giving us our little blurry shape, we can come in and <laughs> we could make this a creature, an alien egg. Uh, let's not do that. There we go. I've got one called Tracer in Emitters 2020.5. That, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, we can probably take the size of this down now as well. But if we come back into After Effects and we'll just do a quick RAM preview and let's have a look. And there it is, nice and simple. And if you'll just develop this a little bit, not just have a basic trail, you can use any of the standard particle illusion effects or presets and sort of build on those to create something a little bit more fancy. My name is Ben Brownie for Boris Effects. I'll see you again soon. Now, the original idea for this video came from the Boris Effects Discord channel. If you have a question that you'd like answered, or if you want to see a particular type of tutorial, join us on the Discord channel. The link is below. And of course, head over to the Boris Effects website for all the latest news and to download a free trial.